something good to make me happy? Mm -hmm. Oh no, Belen, I do not regret what I did for you. I feel carried on by two delightful hours, and I do not wish things to be otherwise than they are. Yet, tell me the truth. I'm very anxious of the consequences, and I greatly fear that I love you more than I should. What can you possibly fear from the affection you've shown me? Everything. The anger of my father, the outrages of my family, the disapproval of the world. And above all, Claire, a change in your heart. I fear that cruel coldness of your sake so often repays the two more proofs of an innocent love. Alas! Do not want me like that. Do not judge me by others. Think me capable of everything, Elise. I love you too much for that. And my love will be as lasting as my life. <laughs> Her temperament of the father is so 
different from the sun. It would be too difficult to be the confidant of both. But rather, try your brother yourself. Use the love that exists between you to enlist him in our cause. For I see him coming! <laughs> Speak to him! Sound him! See, how far we can trust him! I really fear I shall never have the courage to speak to him of my secret! Sister, I'm going to speak to you and can tell you a secret. Oh, I am quite ready to hear you, brother. What is it you have to tell me? Let me think, sister. Sound up in one word. Love. Love? Yes, I love. Before I say more, let me tell you that I depend upon my father and that the name of son subjects me to you. I say this to you to spare you the trouble of saying it to me, for my love will not be to anything. Have you endangered yourself, brother, to hear your love? No, sister. But I'm determined to do so, and I beseech you once more not to put forth any reason to dissuade me from it. Am I such a strange person, brother? No, sister, you do not love. You know not the sweet cow that love is on our hearts. Alas, my brother, let us not speak of my wisdom, for there are very few people in this world who lack wisdom, or only once in their lifetime. And perhaps if I was to open up my heart to you, you would think me less wise than you are yourself. Oh, it's a human to get your heart. Speaking of this, I'll be here to do love. A young girl who has lately come to be in a baby. Who has seemed to inspire love to everyone in college. Nature, my dear sister, has been nothing like you. I felt another man the moment I saw her. And her name is Mary. Oh, she lives in the good For whom the girl has the greatest affection. She waits upon her. She pities her and comforts her with the tenderness of her perfect fidelity. Whatever she does is done in the most charming ways and in all her actions, some of the only people do. And a girl of modesty, a modesty with gentleness. Are you a man likely to be robbed when you put every possible thing on the lock and key 
know God day and night. I will not. Whatever I think fit, announce God to when and where I please. <laughs> I tremble for fear. He suspects something of my money. Yeah. Now I too have had all the divine stories that my money is my Ten thousand dollars. You do know me 
those things up. Yeah, yeah. Would that I had them, these ten thousand dollars. What are you complaining of? Everyone knows that you're well enough off. How am I well enough off? Nothing to be more false. Those who say it are liars. And all these scoundrels. Wait, such a place. Can you stop being angry? It is strange that my own children betray me and become my enemies. Is he saying that you have got to be your enemy? Yes! Such talk and extravagant expenses will be the reason that someday, someday, my children, thieves will come and cut my throat and believe that I am made of gold. What extravagant expenses do I indulge in? What? Is there anything more scandalous than this sumptuous attire with which you strut about the town? I am complaining about your sisters, but you are much worse. I have told you a thousand times, my son, that your lies displease me exceedingly. And for you to dress as you are, you must certainly wrong. Crop you. to dress yourself as you do. I, father, I am you. And as I'm very lucky, I spend in clothes all the money that I win. It is very wrong. If you are lucky at gambling, you should profit from it, from placing the money you win at decent interest, so that you might find it again someday. <coughs> You're quite right. Enough of this subject. Let us talk of something else. I believe they meant science to one another to pick my pocket. <laughs> what do you mean by the science? What do you mean, Bobby? 
You are resolved, you say, to marry Mary. Two, you, you, you. Yes. I, I, I. What does it mean, you know, all this? I feel the sudden business. I must be sure what you want. Please, scoundrel, it is nothing. Go quickly into the counter, into the kitchen, and grab me some gold plus of water. Is one of you fancy men with no more stamina than a chicken? <laughs> As for your brother, I decided to bring him to marry. A certain will has come to my attention today. And as for you, no protection in face, that's made up. You shall marry Mr. Ansar. <gasps> Mr. Ansar? Yes, a sane and good man who is not about 50. Oh! 
do apologize. Yeah. Speak with me. Speak it to me in the manner that I do. No. Why? I am delighted. And I give you all the control over her. Yes. That is right, my daughter. You may run with as much as you like. But I give him. <laughs> I give him the authority that all that heaven has given me. And you will abide by all these facts. After that, resist my dream. I, I will continue to give her the lecture I was giving her. Don't do so. Your life is right here. She had fought to be kept in a tight hand. Quite true, you must. And do not worry. I shall end convincing her. Quite true. But I must go for a stroll in the town. And I'll come back here presently. Yes! Yes, money is the most precious thing in the world. And that you should thank heaven that you have such a worthy man as a father. That is right. You must agree with what the father says. Ah, how well the man speaks. Happy is he against you to secure such a sir.
myself. And well, I thought it was beating me. How is that plan for your school? You ever seen some literature last time I've discovered that my father is my wife? Your father is one? You say so. And I found it very difficult to go into what I discovered and such a discovery. He meddling with love? What the hell is he thinking of? Does he mean to set everyone against him? And is love made for people to look like him? He's punishing for my sins that he's hit, and passion has entered his head. But why do you hide your love from him? So that man said, it would be easy for me to stand back for the love of nature. Indeed, sir. <coughs> Those who borrow us are much stupid. And I'm not put on the same thing when you are huge. You are forcing her to the family of the family. Is the family as well? Excuse me. <coughs> Mr. Simon, the broker who was recommended to us, is a very active and passionate fellow. He says he has left no stone unturned to help you. He assures me that your books are the one as well. Well, I give them the big dollars that I want. Yes, but I'm a certain minor condition, which you must accept for the bargain to be concluded. Have you spoken to the man who's committed the money? Oh God, no. things are not done in that way. He's still more anxious than you to make money. His pay is not by any means to be revealed, and he needs to be introduced to you today at a house to provide by him so he can hear about yourself, your position, and your family. Particularly as my mother is dead, may God rest her soul. And they cannot deprive me what I've inherited from her. Well, if you're some of the conditions, you meant to borrow your thing before anything is done. <coughs> Supposing that the lender is satisfied with all his securities and that the borrower is of age and of a family who's probably ample, so and secure with all of them, that there'll be a good and correct time to borrow. The lender, Dr. Burley's conscience, with the least hesitation, does not wish to lend his money at more than five and a half percent. Five and a half percent? By God, that's honest. We have nothing to complain about. But, as the said lender has not again the set of the sentence, the sum required, uh, and, and, and in order to apply the borrower, he is himself obliged to borrow from another at the rate of twenty percent. Huh? The hell? That's more than 25%. That's exactly what I said. It is for you to consider the matter before you decide. How can I consider? I want the money, therefore I must accept everything. That's true. Exactly what I said. Is there anything else? Only a small tiny item of the $15,000, which are demanded. The lender will only be able to count down 12000 in hard cash. Instead of the remaining 3000 the borrower will have to take the Furniture, clothing, and jewels contain the following catalog. What is the meaning of all this? I'll go to the catalog. First, a gorgeous bed with hangings of lace, very elegant and trim, with olive colored cloth, six chairs in very good condition, lined with soft red and blue shot silver. What does he want me to do with all this? Wait. Tapestry hangings representing the great loves of sin. A large wall of hands with pop turned legs and is provided with a stool. And you know, what am I to do with all this? <laughs> a guitar with all the strings or nearly all. A game of mother groups, most useful to learn to pass the time when one has nothing to do. A little tune, three feet and a half in length, stuffed with pain. The whole thing that was possible is really worth more than $4,500, but to reduce the price of $1,000 to the good nature of the money lender. Let the plague choke you with his good nature. The cutthroat that he is, is he not satisfied with all the interest that he asked that I must you to accept <coughs> instead of the $3,000 that I want all the old rubbish which he picks up? I shan't get 200 grand for all that. And yet he has been in the position to view it with five and one throat. I see you, sir. What do you want me to do? Is to be that young man I just would agree on being fathers? Well, I know, I know well enough how to keep myself out of hot water and how to keep clear of all the things that say the episode do of the desire of dropping. Give me that memory. I may have another look at it. Well, yes, it's good.
good. Excellent. Yes, sir, he's the young man who is greatly in want of money. He's the best person to advise him at any cost, and he will submit to all your conditions. But are you sure, Mr. Simon, that there is no risk to running in this case? But you know the name, the property, or the family for whom you speak. No, I cannot tell you anything for certain, as it was by mere chance that I was made acquainted with him. But he will tell you everything himself. And his servant has assured me that you will be quite satisfied when you know who he is. All I can tell you is that his family is said to be very wealthy. <coughs> that he has already lost his mother. Excellent. <laughs> and that he will pledge you his word. If you insist upon it, that his father will die before eight months ago. That is something, Mr. Simon. Charity demands for us to gratify whatever we have it in our time. Evidently. Mr. Simon is speaking to your father. Has he been told the way, eh? And would you be capable of betraying me? Ah, oh, you're in good time. What have you told you to come here? <coughs> what? Well, certainly not I who told them your name and address. But I am of the opinion that they are people who can be trusted and you can come to some understanding together. What? This is the man who wants to borrow $50,000 of which I have spoken to you. <laughs> what? My son? Is it you who will back your son? Thank you. 
fight. They eat your nothing to waste it. When these cares they pay for coming to the young children. <laughs> Meanwhile, you have to get ready to welcome my lady love, who is coming this afternoon.
And to be true to the friends that we invite, be economical to bring throughout. And that we must live by one of the ancient sayings that we must eat to live and not live to eat. <laughs> ah, how long the man speaks. Come, come, let me embrace you for this day. What was it again? That we must eat to live and not, no, that we must live to eat. No, 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 no. What was it? That it is, we must eat to live and not live to eat.
Certainly, sir. <laughs> if I was sure, you would not get angry. No, no. Never fear. <laughs> Excuse me, sir, but I am sure you would get angry. No, no. On the contrary, you will oblige me greatly. And I want to know what it is that has failed me. Since you wish it, sir, I will tell you frankly that you are the laughing stock of everybody. <laughs> that nothing to laugh people more than to make fun of you. To tell stories without end about your stinginess. Now, one tells a story how not long after you prosecuted a nameless cat for eating up the remainder of a leg of mutton. You are the butt and guest and thou word of everybody. And never does anybody mention you but under the names of miser, stingy, mean, old.
It's great and awesome to be seen with the nice guy. But it is with glasses that we look at the stars. And you are a star, the most beautiful in the land. Excuse me, for I have not ordered 
your freshness. What's going on? I'm not coming here at once. No, I think it is better for us to go to the fair at once to return earlier and have plenty of time for talking. Then have my engine modified so it runs faster. I really am sorry for not ordering you refreshments. Please.
And as 
I had promised them I love. I would have given it to you if it wasn't for the dislike you had for it. <laughs> <laughs> to me? To you, my son. In marriage? In marriage! It is true, by the way, she's not at all to my taste. But I'll bring myself towards you very early if you please. If I please? I am more reasonable than you think! But I do not wish to come out with you. It's alright, brother. I will make it different to you. No, a marriage cannot be happy when there is no love. That may come by and by. And it is often said that love is a proof of marriage. Ah, uh, no, no. no. <laughs> no. You cannot risk it on the side of man. And there are some troublesome things that I do not care to run the chance of. If you had any inclination towards her, you should have married her. But as it is, I will return to my first intention to marry her. Your sisters are such a father. Thank you, thank you, and we will have secrets to you. I have liked her ever since I saw her the first day of the promenade, and intended to ask you to let me marry her today. But you spoke of marrying her. That's why I was deterred from it. I didn't want to displease you, I want. Have you made her any business, my son? Were they a lot? Yes, considering how long you've been acquainted. And you were well received, Uncle? Very well received. And have you told her of your love for her and of your intentions for marrying her? Yes, and I spoke to the mother for you with that visit your And did the mother kindly receive your proposal for her daughter? Yes, very kindly. And most of all, does she return her love? Yes, if I believe appearances, she's certainly very well disposed of me. <laughs> this is the very thing I wanted to know, and this scoundrel has felt for it. Now look here, my son. I am a very reasonable fan, and you will have to, if you please, get rid of your love for Marianne and seize the pay your attention to a woman I intend for myself. And you will return to your first duty and marry the very wife that I have chosen for. So this is how you deceive me, father? Very well then. Since things are such, I openly declare to you that I should never give up my love for Marianne. Hear that never. Henceforth, I shall not shrink in order to dispute her from you. And if you have on your side the consent of the mother, I may have other things left to aid me. You dare to trespass on my grounds! It is you who trespass on mine! I was the first! And I not your father! Don't you not hold me! Run back! There are certain things in which kids don't owe respect to their fathers, and love is a respecter of persons. My stick will make you know that. All your friends are nothing to me. Wait, wait, wait. So you won't give up, Marianne? Never. Greg, bring me my stick. Bring me my stick. Gentlemen, what is the meaning of all this? What are you thinking of? I shall keep to it. Sir, gently. He dares to speak to me with such a joke as that. Sir, I beg you. I'll keep speaking like that. What, you father? Let me get out of here. Let me. To who, your son? To me, sir, it is different. Master Jacques, I shall make you the judge in this affair, and you will soon see that I have right on my side. Willingness. Now, go a little further back. There is a young girl that I love, and that I want to marry. This scoundrel wants to marry her also, and loves her in spite of me. He is very wrong. <laughs> it isn't, it isn't, it isn't. I'm not so right. It isn't, isn't what? An abominable thing to see a son who 
does not shrink to becoming the rival of his father. It is, is it not? His bounden duty to not interfere. I love. You are right. Come on. I, I will go and speak to you. Very well, since he wishes to make you the judge between us, I have no objection. And I will move forward without quarrel between you. You don't mean you're right, Bob. You see, I love the young girl who returned my patient and kindly received the, my heart. But he has the intention of marrying her. He is suddenly love. I and mean, look at him, the old rich. Is it right for someone his age of marrying? Ought he not now leave it to young men like me? You are quite right. He is not making sense. Now let me speak the word of you. <coughs> really, your son is not so extravagant as you think. And he is amenable to reason. Now he tells me that he is conscious of the respect he owes me. And he only got angry in the heat of the moment. Now, he will willingly submit to all you want, so long as you treat him with more kindness and give to him in marriage a woman to his taste. Ah, Master Jacques, you will have to tell him that he can obtain all that he likes from me on these terms, except Marianne, and that he is free to choose a wife for whomsoever he wishes. Leave that to me. <laughs> really, your father is not so outrageous as you make him out for me. Now he tells me that it is your violence which irritates me, and that he only objects to your way of doing things. Now he will willingly grant you all that you want, so long as you use gentleness. Show him the kindness, the respect, the submission a son of his father. Oh, Master Josh, he can assure you that he will find me the most submissive of men who grants me the name. <laughs> it is all right. He consents to what you say. Nothing could be better. It's all very right. He's happy with your promise. Heaven to be praised. Now, gentlemen, come. There is nothing left to do but to talk over the matter quietly together. You are agreed now, and yet you are on the point of quarreling. Ah, Master Jacques, I truly am grateful for you. You deserve a reward. No, sir. <laughs> there is no need. Say, 
our love. That when you give me Marianne, you give me everything. Who talks of giving you Marianne? Justice. 
if I do not give as good a fare as I should like, it is the fault of your Valera, who has clipped my wings with the scissors of his economy. What? Rascal! There are more important things to talk about other than your supper! And I want to know what has become of the money which has been stolen from you. Some money has been stolen from you. Yes, you rascal! Now I'm going to hang you if you don't tell me where it is you have put it. Pray, don't be hard upon him. I see by his looks that he is an honest fellow. He will tell you all you want to know without going to prison. Yes, my friend, if you confess and your heart shall come, and you shall be well rewarded by it. You see, some money has been stolen from him, and it's not possible to know nothing of it. Very thing, I want it in order to be revenged on that. Valera! Ever since he came here, he has been a favorite, and his opinion is the only one listened to. Moreover, I have forgotten neither the cuddling of the nor what is it? See, must read about Leave him alone. He's preparing himself to satisfy
seeking a favorable opportunity. But I beg of you, please do not be angry with me and hear my motives. What? My motives? Could you possibly give me infamous things? Ah, oh, sir, I do not deserve these names. I'm guilty towards you, but after all, my fault is pardonable. How? Pardonable? A premeditated trick and an assassin! I beseech you, sir, please do not be angry with me. And when you have heard what I have to say, you will see that the harm is not so great as you make it out to be. The harm? Not so bad as I make it to be? Your blood, sir, has not fallen into bad hands. No, sir. My rank is high enough not to disgrace it. And it is my intentions for you to restore what it is that was taken. <laughs> Your honour, sir, shall be fully satisfied. My honour is not the question here. But tell me. What made you commit such a foul deed? Do you really ask it? Yes. I think I should have the right to do so. A God who carries with him the excuses of what he makes people do. Love. Treasure! He speaks of it as a lover does of his mistress! 
So Dame Claude was there to bear witness. Ah. Hello, my servant and accomplice in this affair. How could I even know it? Oh, my face falls. Sorry. <laughs> So she was there to bear witness, and it was only after her seeing the innocence of my love that she helped me to convince your daughter in this deed. Ah, has the fear of justice been moved might? What is this rubbish you speak about my daughter? Sir, I love her. And that it was only yesterday that she signed a mutual promise to marriage. My daughter has signed a promise to marriage. Yes, and I did too. Oh, Well, 
the school nowadays are those pretenders of tenability and those who, out of their own obscurity, deck themselves in insanity with a battle of skills name that comes to their head. Know that I am too upright to adorn myself which is not mine, with, with a name which is not mine, and that all Naples can bear testimony to my birth. Thirdly, take care of what you are about to say. You speak before a man to whom all Naples is known, <laughs> and who can soon see if your story is true. If all Naples is known to you, then you know it was Don Thomas de Alberti. Certainly, I know who he is, and few people know him better than I do. I need a chair for Don Thomas. No, Don Matt. <coughs> let him speak. We shall soon know what he has to say of me. That is to him that I owe my birth. To him? Yes. Nonsense. You're allowed to try and make out a more likely story. And do not pretend to shelter yourself under such a piece of deceit. <laughs> Consider your words better before you speak. I am not being deceitful. And that there, I say nothing over here that I cannot prove. What? You dare to call yourself the son of Don Thomas? Yes, I dare to do so. And I'm ready to maintain the truth against anyone, whoever he may be. This other city is marvelous. <laughs> Learn to your confusion that it is now at least 16 years ago since the man of whom you speak died in a shipwreck at sea with his wife and children while he was trying to save their lives from the cruel persecution that followed the troubles in Naples and it caused the banishment of several noble families. Yes, but learn to your confusion that his son, seven years of age, was on that ship and was saved by a Spanish vessel and that he is now who speaks to you. <gasps> know that the captain of the ship touched with compassion to my misfortune and that he loved me and raised me but I was his own. Lately I found that my father is not dead and in the hearing of this I went to search for him and then an accident arranged by heavens, brought to my sight is an accident. <laughs> and that, the sight of her had made me a slave to her beauty. <laughs> With the violence of my love and the harshness of her father led me to decide, to disguise myself into this house as a disguised servant and to send others to look for my parents. What, what other proof have you besides your own words? That all this is not a table based by your comfort. <laughs> what other proofs? The captain of the ship, a ruby seal which belonged to my father, and this watch which my mother gave me. Alas! I mean, as you be, you do not deceive us. And all they say clearly tells me you're my brother. <laughs> you? My sister? <laughs>
paying attention to the virtuous concept. The teaching security theorems for my life and creatures has made me abandon the idea of determining it and having found the means of selling what I have. I'll settle here in the name of myself. I wish to forget the sorrow of the name associated with so many and great souls.
You know you make me wanna <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.